If he calls and asks you to put in, say, Coach, what do you need done most on the court? Ask him. You know, if you've got a very emotional coach, and some coaches are very emotional, and they say, I don't know, just get in there. All right, well, just go in and hustle your butt off then. Just go in and hustle. When the game's over and you're in practice the next day, and you get out of practice, and he's away from all the intensity and everything, try to take a minute with him and say, when I go into the game as a substitute, what would you like to have done? What do you think you need most? Or does it change from game to game? And find out. Start thinking like the coach. Obviously, if you're a six man, or one of several six men, if your coach is putting you in the game, there's a reason. You agree with that? There's definitely a reason. And nobody that substitutes into the game is unimportant. Their time may be more minimal than others, but nobody that substitutes into a game is unimportant. How many of you have ever watched a basketball game where there's a player on the end of the bench hardly ever gets in, when he gets in, the fans go crazy. When she goes in the game, fans go nuts, right? Isn't it as important for that player to give everything that they have as it is for the first player off the bench? Absolutely is. It's vitally important. You have to develop a mentality for being a six man. Doesn't matter who starts. What matters? Who finishes? I often have players that start a game, but they're not there a lot of times at the end of the game. Why? Because they do better when they begin a game, but I want players that I know are going to play better defense at the end or rebound better at the end, or we might have control of the ball. Or we might be down and I need better defenders on the court. Does that make sense? So just because you're a starter does not give you the privilege of being on the court under all situations. And you have to recognize that. You can't go back to the bench and sit there and pout. You need to be cheering your teammates on just like they would cheer you on. Like they should cheer you on. Sometimes coaches need guys that are fast on the floor and they need five of them. Sometimes coaches need five rebounders because you might be up one and there's a free throw to end the game and if they miss you need the rebound. Sometimes coaches need defensive guys because there's 30 seconds left and you need to stop. And you have to recognize that and if that's a weak area of yours, find out when. After the game, no. After practice one day. Then find out why. And work on your weakness. The six man is one of the best situations in all of sports. There's nothing like it in any other sport because a substitute in basketball sees more action and playing time than any other sport. More than a designated hitter, more than a substitute in soccer, which seldom happens, more than a substitute in football. I mean, they platoon guys in and out a little bit now. There's no game in the entire world where a substitute is of higher value than in basketball. And you need to be appreciative of the opportunity if you're a six man to be that. Doesn't matter who starts the game, matters who finishes. And you can help to finish a game. It doesn't mean it might be in the last minute. It might be halfway through the fourth quarter. You get put in, team's in a two point game, your hustle, a few rebounds, a few fast break layups, a couple stops on defense, all of a sudden your team's up 12. Isn't that finishing the game? I think it is, don't you? And so you're not there the last minute and a half on the court, but you're up 12. Well, you help to finish the game. You don't think a coach recognizes that, you're wrong. Those things matter. You have to contain your own opponent. You can't let them uh, go crazy. When you enter the game on defense, <clears throat> you, got, you have to contain your opponent. Your coach might be putting you in the game because some player is going crazy on your team. Now, starter that was covering them emotionally is a little let down because they scored some points on them. They're a little tired. Coach puts you in and says, go cover this player. Well, 
Do you think it's just because maybe your teammate got in foul trouble, so you're stuck with trying to cover the stud? No, maybe they're putting you in because they think that out of all the guys on the bench, you're the guy that has the best capability of putting the stops on this person. And you need to recognize that. That's not an insult. That's the highest compliment you can have. I wouldn't put my worst defensive player in on a guy that's tearing us up. I'd put my best defensive player. And if he burns a few fouls, then that's what I need him to do. But what I want him to do is go in the game. Whether the guy scores another basket or not isn't going to be the issue. What I want him to do is go in the game and harass the player, take the player out of his rhythm, get the player just pissed off so that he's not thinking and focusing on offense. I want to change the rhythm of what that player is doing. And we've talked about how to do that a little bit, haven't we? You climb in on people, you yell at them, you lock their legs in, you make them put the ball on the floor, you deny them the ball. We're talking about level two defense, where you attack the offensive player. You start out denying the ball. If he gets freed up on screens when he catches it, bam. You're right inside of him, you're yelling at him, guy doesn't know what to do. That's what your coach might need you to do. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to turn up the heat. We're trying to alter the makeup and the flow of the game when you go in. It doesn't mean you have to make every big play on offense, does it? A good rule of thumb for a six man is to turn up the heat on defense. Don't make stupid fouls. Stay on your feet. Turn up the heat on defense and on offense, have patience and poise. Get the ball to the people that are the shooters and the scorers. Get your hustle points. Does that make sense? If the coach wants you to do more than that, then he's going to tell you. And when you get open shots, if in practice you're used to and accustomed to taking those, then the coach is still going to want you to take those in a game. That will not change. Your role will not change. But don't come in thinking that you have to go and bust everybody for 20 points to start out. Pick up the hustle points first. Turn it up on defense. Get into the flow of the game, and then we'll just let it come. It'll all piece together. As a six man, if you walk into a game and you're not a factor on defense, you're not doing something to change the tempo of the game, as a six man, you're not doing your job. If you just walk in and say, I'm going to play level one defense, I'm going to stay between my man and the basket, okay, I'm going to box out, you're not doing your job. I want a substitute to come into the game and I want that substitute to change the complexion of the other team's offense. I want it changed, and I want it changed now. No matter what, that is your number one responsibility. This is pretty simple for a six man. Just stay with the fundamentals. How many times have you seen a player all hyped up, gets in the game, trying to hustle, trying to pick the team up, they go charging in for an offensive rebound and jump over somebody's back, get a foul call? Happens a lot, doesn't it? Because players don't understand what their role and responsibility really is. It's not your responsibility to jump over someone's back. That's not hustle. That's just stupid. It's not a hustle play. A hustle play is when you get position. Because it takes more effort and energy to get offensive position, shots going up, guy block, boxes you out, to spin, not worry about the ball, but spin, turn, fight, move, locate, get position, than it does to go charging in from here, mm, splat, right over the guy's back. It's not a good play cost your team a foul, they're going to be in the bonus, your other, the opponent's going to be in the bonus earlier, cost you a foul, and also cost you a possession. What you have to do is hustle in, try to get that position so that you're in a situation you can secure a rebound. That is a hustle play. You understand the difference? So stay with the fundamentals on rebounding. 